What's going on guys? Stefan, SNE's Garage. Today we're going to be tackling the fuel pump and the fuel tank skid plate slash support bracket on this 2010 Wrangler JKU. <laughs> So this is actually very common with these Jeeps in the Northeast. If you take a look here at our skid plate, you'll see that support is rusted and gone. There's holes in this thing in the back, and then in the very back there's some more holes. And I've been afraid to fill this tank up since I bought this Jeep because of it. Uh, so what we have behind us here is a Dorman replacement. This is not an OEM part. This is made by Dorman. Uh, you can get it on Rock Auto. You can get it from Amazon. Um, I'll go ahead and drop a link to this down in the description below. And what's nice is it also comes with new hardware, so it comes with all new bolts. Um, so what we went ahead and did is we drove this thing until the fuel tank was just about empty. So if we go in here and turn this key on, you'll see we don't have very much gas left in here at all. There's less than a quarter tank. Uh, so the tank should be nice and light and this should be nice and easy. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, open the hood, we're going to find the fuse for the fuel pump, we're going to pull it, and then we're going to start the Jeep. And what that's going to do is basically let the engine run on the pressure that is in the fuel line so that when we disconnect the lines under the Jeep by the tank, uh, they are not under pressure. Alright guys, so this yellow 20 amp here is going to be our fuel pump fuse. It is fuse M25, so we're going to go ahead and pull that. We're going to start the Jeep and let it run until it peters out. Wow, that was quick. Try to start it again. Alright, cool. So our prime is basically now gone from the fuel pump and we can now go ahead, get underneath it and start disconnecting lines. Alright guys, so you're going to have two lines up front here. One is going to be a vapor line, the other is going to be a fuel line, so do be mindful of that. We did get a little bit of gasoline on us. Uh, not a huge deal, I guess it is what it is. Um, but now we're going to start working our way back. You can see all the holes in this thing. Um, but we're going to start disconnecting our filler neck up here. It uh, looks like there's another line up here that goes to the uh, canister that we're going to have to worry about. Um, and then we're just going to try to sit up back here and look up. The fuel pump is back up in this area. We're going to see if we can reach the electrical connector before we lower the tank. And uh, just try to get as much as we can before we begin to lower the tank. Uh, so let's go ahead and work on that filler neck and take it from there. Alright guys, so we're here under the back side of the Jeep. We went ahead and disconnected this vent line here from the charcoal canister, and then it tees off right here. We disconnected that, we took our fuel filler neck off, and then we took off that hose and this hose that goes to the fuel pump. So from what I can tell, it looks like hose-wise we're completely disconnected. I'm going to look up there, see if I can find the fuel pump connector. Um, if I can unplug it before we drop the tank, I will. If not, we're just going to drop the tank really, you know, nice and slow. And uh, we'll see if we can get it once it's down a little bit. Alright guys, we're at a point here we can go ahead and start pulling some of these bolts out. Got my jack set up over here. Uh, eventually, once we get to these last bolts, we're going to put the jack under here to support this tank um, in... <laughs> the strongest spot that we can find. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our 18 millimeter socket and we're going to go ahead and remove one, two, three, and then loosen the fourth one. <clears throat> and we're basically just going to pivot this thing out of the way uh, so that it will clear the uh, fuel tank. And then we can go ahead and start removing these fuel tank skid plate bolts. There's going to be one here, one here, two up here, and then we have the ones up here. There's going to be one here right by this cross member. Uh, you're probably going to need a swivel for that. Uh, we have one, so we should have no problem there. You're going to have one here over by the drive shaft. Again, you'll probably need a swivel. Then you're going to have one back here. And then as far as I can tell, that should be it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start doing that. Uh, once I have the tank back on the ground, or down on the ground, uh, we'll pull it out from under the truck, and then uh, we'll show you what we're going to do about our fuel pump. Alright guys, we got our fuel tank out here. 
I didn't even have to disconnect this. This can go right back on. We don't need to touch that. That was one, I, one of the ones I did up front. So now we're going to go ahead and disconnect this because we're going to be replacing this fuel pump. But the first thing I'm going to do is grab my vacuum cleaner get all this dirt out of here. Actually, I could also just use a blowgun uh, just so that when I pull this fuel pump out, none of this crap falls into the tank. Um, but then we can go ahead, lift this tank up and out of this fuel tank support and then slide it over here and drop it right onto this one. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do here is, um, technically there's a special service tool to get this off that grabs it here here, 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 and here. It's like, it's got fingers on it. Uh, we don't have that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lube the heck out of this with some PB Blaster or penetrating oil. And I'm gonna grab my air hammer and I'm gonna grab it right in here, super carefully, because I don't wanna damage this plastic tank. And just one or two quick hits with the air hammer should knock this loose. Um, and then at that point, I can go ahead and drop the new fuel pump in. Guys, like I said, the air hammer popped that right off. Uh, before I pull this pump out, we're going to go ahead and try to wipe up as much of this as we can. We went ahead and disconnected this fuel supply hose from the pump. Um, and then once I get this cleaned out, we can go ahead and pull that pump out. And here we have our new Delphi Technologies uh, fuel pump. This is going to come with everything you need. Um, it's going to come with the packing ring for the fuel pump and everything. Packing ring is right in here. Here's the pump and the gasket, or the, the basket rather. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get that installed. If you want to buy this Delphi, um, I'm going to also drop a link down to that one in the description below. Um, I've used Delphi pumps on several other Jeeps. Uh, granted, they weren't Wranglers, they were uh, XJs, Cherokees, but um, I've had good luck with them and I'm going to give it a shot. So let me clean that up and then uh, we'll go ahead and pull that pump, drop the new one in. All right, guys, so we got our old fuel pump out right here. Here's our packing ring. Now, the reason we're replacing this fuel pump is uh, because this Jeep actually has an extended start the first time you start it in the beginning of the day. If you let it sit for a couple hours, it'll do it again. And what the cause of that is, is there is a check valve in these fuel pumps that goes bad that allows the fuel pressure in the fuel rail and the fuel lines to drain back into the tank. So it essentially loses its prime. So I figured if I'm dropping the tank to do the skid plate, it doesn't make sense not to put a pump in it. Now I may have to transfer this little clip over. We'll see. I got to see if the new pump has one. Um, now what you're going to want to do here is clean this area as best you can and try to prevent as much as you can from falling in the tank. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that little bit out. It's really not that big of a deal, but I want to try to get it out. And this area here where your new packing ring is going to sit is the most important part. So make sure that is spotless. All right, guys. So we have our packing ring in there. Our new fuel pump is just resting in there. We're going to go ahead and use our air hammer again. We're going to grab it right here. And we're just going to bump it to go ahead and lock this ring back up. Um, and then we're going to go ahead, lift up the tank, put it in our new bracket, and then lift the whole assembly up into the Jeep. Just like that, our new fuel pump's in. We're gonna pull this nipple off. We are gonna to have to transfer that little clip over, clip this in, and then we can go ahead and start swapping the tank into our new bracket. All right, guys, so we got our skid back up here. Um, the easiest way for you to do this is to set your jack up long ways so you can roll this back and forth. Because what you have to do is basically you have to get it under the car and slide it forward about four or five inches and jack it up so that you clear the rear axle. And once you clear that, you roll it back into place and jack it up the rest of the way. I'm just going ahead and making my final torquing of all of these uh, bolts here. And I do have one here that I need to clean up with a tap. It is a 12 uh, millimeter by 1.5. So we're gonna go ahead and clean those up and then put our last bolt in. All right, guys, we're all done. We got all of our EVAP lines connected. We got our fuel tank filler neck connected. Went ahead and slapped our fuse back in. Let's go ahead, come in here. Make sure we have a fuel gauge here. Fuel gauge is reading. Fires right up. So if this video helped you change your fuel pump or your fuel tank skid or drop your fuel tank for whatever reason on your 2007 all the way to 2018 Wrangler JKU, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.